Job chapter 12. And Job answered, gave back to Job again, and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, so not just talking to Zophar, people's plural, ye, plural, ye are the people. Job's going a little sarcasm here. You're the people. And wisdom shall die with you. You carry all the wisdom of the world. And when you die, wisdom dies. Job's got a pretty good attitude, even though he's being heckled and just accusation. Is that enough? But I, Job, have understanding as well as you. I know. I am not inferior. That's the first time that word shows up to you. <clears throat> Listen, I'm no spring chicken here. I've got more than you guys got. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? What? Chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11. So Job is saying, listen, you guys are right. You're just not right about me. I am as one mocked of his neighbor. <laughs> and look at chapter 11, verse 3. Thou mockest. Job saying, I'm not mocking. You're mocking me. Now watch this. Now what's the mockery? Who calls upon God. That is exactly what Job has done. And he answers him. Not God answering. Who? These men that wisdom's going to die with them. You people. Listen, I've called upon God, Job says. You have answered me. Not God. So Job is not acquiring of these men and their speeches any godly wisdom that comes from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I call on God, I'm talking to God. Why are you why are you talking? You know, people say you ought not to be so mean, you ought not to be so cruel. Job just told right out, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I know more than you do. And Job doesn't know anything. And remember, one of the things that Schofield says about Zophar, he knows it all. And this is Job answering to that. The just, upright man is laughed to scorn. Those that do good are laughed, are scorned, or mocked. That's exactly what they're doing to Job. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is in the case. Now Job's going to get into a little bitterness here. He's going to make some statements that are not true. But they look like it. Tabernacles, the houses, the homes of robbers prosper. And when you look at the thieves of the world, politics, used car salesmen, everyone that's you know, you look at it it's like, hey, you know, look how well they're doing. Look how great they're doing. And when you look at it with worldly set of eyes, without God. Man, the men in the prisons, man, look at it. They, they got exercise. They got clothes. They got uh, uh, heating and air conditioning. They got clothes. They got, you know, sports. They got everything. So when you open up your eyes to the world and the world only as... Uh, Solomon will write in the book of Ecclesiastes, yes, that is 100% true, but it's not true. And if a wicked man dies without the, the knowledge of God, today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he loses it all. He gains nothing but the lake of fire that burns forever, and he takes nothing into it. They that provoke God are secure. They're really not. And yet these men that deal with Job, they're provoking God to anger. And if we ever get to chapter 4, uh, four if we finish the book of Job, we will see that God will be angry with these men. But Job is sitting here in pain and misery and destruction and death. And he's like, you know what? You, 
All the world is doing better than I am. And that's not the time to put your eyes on the world. And whose hand God bringeth abundantly. God brings them great riches. God brings them great children. God brings them... That's, that's not the truth, Job. But remember, Job is bitter. He's in pain and suffering. And these three friends of his, now all three have spoken, have not done him any justice. They have done or said nothing to help Job out in his problem. You notice that there's been no prayer at all. A man like this will need prayer. But ask now the beasts, the animals, and they shall teach thee. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knows not in all these, the fowls, the birds, the fish, the earth, the beasts, that the hand of the Lord has wrought this. And Job is making really two statements here. Number one, look at nature, and nature will tell you God. Nature will tell you that we did not come from apes. Look at an ape and look at a human. Yeah, they may have five fingers and blah, 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 blah. But they're not the same. Today, people can't even see the difference between a male and a female. They're not going with nature. They're going against nature. And Job's also making a statement against his three friends. I can get more good advice from the bees, from the fish, and from the earth than I can get from you. Job is harsh. The earth knows better than you do. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing? God. And the breath of all mankind. Genesis chapter 2. Before Genesis 2 is ever written. Job says we come from a creator. We are a creation. Higher-ups and educated folks don't believe that today. Does not the ear try words, correct, and the mouth taste his meat? I'm listening to you guys. In your mouth, <laughs> you ought to be eating something. Because what's going in my ears are not correct. Interesting. With the ancient is wisdom, old people. In the length of days, understanding. So, the older you are, Joe says, the more you're going to get knowledge. You've made the mistakes of life. Not saying you're not, you've not—you made them all. But you've, you've made enough mistakes. You've done enough living. You've done enough good things. You've done enough bad things. You've had enough, you know, mountains. you had enough valleys. That the older you are, the more knowledge you have. Now, we don't know the age of these men that are dealing with Joe. And we really don't know the, the age of Job either. But Job is up there in ages. But remember the time of Job. I mean, they're not living 400 years. But it's in that mainframe. There's still amount, a lot of years to be lived. He's around the time of uh, Jacob, Esau, Rebekah, and Isaac. So it, this is a very true statement. So, if you guys are really aged, how come you don't know anything? Oh, Joe! Man, he lit a fire in their butt. You guys have age. You don't know nothing. People say, you shouldn't say that to people. I'm going to put them in their place with the Bible. You don't like it? They don't like it? That's absolutely tough. And you can just fight with the Bible and fight with God. You don't like my attitude? Well, I got my attitude from God. Thank you very much. And you got your sins from the devil. Now you go battle God. Job is 100% right. The vain words to him. With him, God is wisdom and strength. He, God, has counsel and understanding. You want it? He comes from God. You know what? 
You guys, you guys don't know nothing. It did not come from God. That's what he's saying. Whoa. And I'm telling you, they are not and have not spoken an inspiration of the Bible and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to the life of Job himself. Now, there are some things that are true. And we've, we've we studied that. We'll see more, but not for Job. These men are not standing up before a classroom group, before a group of, of people of different sexes and different uh, ages and different whatever. They're facing one man in sin who needs answers and they're not giving it. We'll see that with the chapters as we go further and further. But God has the wisdom, God has the strength, God has the counsel, and God has the understanding. Behold, he breaketh down. God, and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man, sets a word he can't get out, and there can be no opening. Now back in chapter 11, verse 10, if he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? So Job is listening to these men, and he's answering these men as he's talking. No one but God. So far. See, so far threw the question out there, but he didn't really answer it. Job said, I'll answer it for you. God. Behold, he, God, withholdeth the waters, rain, rivers, and they dry up. Simple, plain and simple, true. If it does not rain, it's going to dry up. Also he, God, sendeth them out waters. And they over, overturn, that's the first time that word shows up, the earth. God can send no rain, you get a drought. Dry ground. God can send much rain, and you're going to get an overflow, a flood. And you have Elijah here, who's not even here yet. Elijah causes the drought, and Noah, that's happened after Job. Job knows about Noah and that great worldwide flood. With him, God is strength again and wisdom again. Repeat it. He deceiveth, the deceived and the deceiver are his. God will cause a man to be deceived by a deceiver. God has said later on, or uh, what we've already read in the Bible, forget where it was, but God said, hey, I want this man to be perverted. I want this man to fall by the sword. I want this man, uh, I want evil for him. Who will go before him and speak in the mouth of his prophet? And one of the spirits in heaven said, I'll do it. I'll do it. He said, well, what will you do it with? I will be a lying spirit in his mouth of his prophet. God says, go ahead. You know why people are, are deceived in religions and science and education? Because that's exactly what they want. God's not willing that any should perish, so God's not going to send someone to deceive you that will turn you away unless that's what you want. God is holy and righteous enough, and God has given us a free will to say, if that's what you want, I'll give it to you. That's the time you don't want what you request of God to be answered. He leadeth counselors away, spoiled, with great goods, with great money. Why do all these big shots make all this money? God's allowed it. And the love of money is the root of all evil. And it will destroy them because they want money. They don't want holiness. Not bad for the first book of the Bible. He maketh the judges fools. Samson was a judge and he was a fool. He's a fool that wouldn't listen to his parents and wouldn't listen to godly advice. And he ended up as a suicidal. Though he's in the Hebrew book of faith, he did not go into a special hell because of suicide. And you say, well, why do we got all these justices and all, the, all this, this bad judgments and justice and courts and the criminal system? God said, hey, that's what you want? I'll give it to you. 
you don't want to correct your children for what the Bible says, then you will reap what you sow. You don't want to do and do right by God and Jesus, then when you got troubles, troubles and trials and tribulations and pains and suffering, be not deceived, God is not marked. What sober man soweth, that he will also reap. You put out seeds of poison ivy, and you're going to get poison ivy. Stop your complaining and all that. It's what you want. It's what you want. And God will find somebody to give you exactly what you want. You want a woman preacher? Though the Bible says you're not to have a woman preacher, pastor. I'll give you one. You want a mega church where they don't have anything to do with the Bible? God said, I'll, I'll find someone for you. The devil will be all too happy. And God will tell the devil, Job 1 and 2, go ahead and do it. He looses the bond, looses the first time that shows up, of kings, Manasseh. Manasseh was put into handcuffs, was carried away for all the wickedness that he'd done. Manasseh, I don't know if it was in, it was in the prison where he was, man. He, Lord God, I am so sorry, Lord God. I, I want to do right. Lord God, forgive me, please. God said, take those handcuffs off and bring them home. Any president that's alive today and that will be alive, the next president, they want to be loose from the bond, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <coughs> and girdeth their loins with a girdle. I don't know much about girdles, but a man shall not wear what pertains to a woman. There the Bible says a man to wear a girdle. Now what are you going to do with that? Ooh, trouble in the Bible. Just look at it. He, God, leadeth princes, they're under the kings, away spoiled. Again, they get all this money, they get all this credentials, they get all the glamour. And overthrow us, that's the first time that word shows up, the mighty. We won this great war. It was our victory. No, God gave you the victory. You're just taking the credit for God. We ought to give all the credit to God, and when we don't, we need to repent of our sins. Rejoice evermore in the good and the bad, as Job has showed us. He, God, removeth away the speech of the trusty, and taketh away the understanding of the age. Well, why are there old people today who've got dementia? Why are there people today who can't remember things? Why are people today, they're old and they're nursing home and their mind is gone? God did it. Sometimes it's because of their sins. You mess with alcohol, you mess with tobacco, you mess with illegal drugs, even uh, with uh, commercial drugs. God says, hey, when you get older, if you pay for those sins, it's evil. And the devil may want you to have problems in your life, and God say, okay, go do it. He, God, poureth content, that's uh, despising, upon princes. I didn't like that president. I like this president. No, that president is no good. That that state senator is no good. That, that, that speaker of the house is terrible. She went. I said, hey. You know what I told you in the Bible? You know what I told you in Paul and Peter's way? You're supposed to pray for the, the people in authority. You're supposed to pay for, pray for the powers that be. You're supposed to obey them. Free will. You don't want to do it? Then when you lose rewards in the judgment seat of Christ, that's your free will. You want to do right, God will give you all power to do right. You want to do wrong, God says, okay, go and do it. Go against the prayer. Go against, the, you know, what is right. Go against my word. Go ahead. You'll suffer. He weakens the strength of the mighty. You mean, uh, uh, Goliath? I curse you by the name of our gods. Uh, wrong God, Goliath. How about God just rocks you to sleep? He said, to David did. No, David said, I come in the name of the power of the Lord. God said, just take that rock. There was a king, he's sitting in his, his uh, chariot. He's riding along. And God said, hey, take that arrow, just shoot it anywhere. Okay. 
between right to his heart. Right to the joints of that harness, the Bible says. God takes you down, puts you in a hospital bed, takes you where, you, you know, a little bug bites you, you get a little flu, you get a little bug. Mighty. These bodies are acceptable to little bugs, little flus, little things that will take us down. I've been brought down just because my, uh, I had an infection in my body and I didn't even know I had the infection. It didn't show on the outside, it was in the inside. He, God, discovereth, that's the only time that word shows up, deep things out of darkness. What Hubble has not shown us, God has seen. You know, when you're in the dark and you got your sin and, and mom and dad hasn't seen you and and the pastor hasn't seen you or somebody hasn't seen you, God sees you. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold, the evil and the good. God sees you do it. You're not hiding from God. He bringeth out the light, the shadow of death. When a Christian, when a person who dies right in God, you go off to where there's light. All light, glory, heaven. Be careful because there's an imitator of the light also. I forget, 2nd 1st Corinthians, I think it's chapter 11. The devil, uh, uh, devil is an, as an angel of light. Be careful of that light. You know, people say, oh, I've seen the light at death. You better check it. You better check it. But when you die in the Lord, be absent from the body today and present with the Lord. You're with light. Always. He increases the nation. Population is by God. Children are a heritage of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. And destroyeth them. Babylon's gone because God said, you're done. Tyrus is gone because God says, you're done. The only nations that are going to last after the second advent of Jesus Christ is those nations that helped the Jews in the tribulation period. All other nations, goodbye, see ya. Done with you. He enlarges God the nations. That would be borders. Makes the borders bigger. Makes them smaller. He strengthens them again. Gives them that power back. He, God, takes away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth. That taking away the heart could be death, could be illness, could be disease, or could be, I, I don't love the Lord no more, I don't want to serve the Lord. We're having a lot of people who are these popularity people in the news and in the great who I am of the Christians, and they're dropping their, their hearts, they're giving up on God. I read the other day one of them because God has given him everything he wants. Now he's happy. Now he doesn't need God to walk away. Glad to see church age. He takes away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there's no way. So their heart is not in the Lord. Their heart is not given to the God. And God says, okay, fine, go wander. Go live through life aimlessly. They grow in the dark without light. That's feeling, trying to feel around. And he makes them to stagger like a drunken man. They can't even walk straight. Their walk is not straight. They're drunk without alcohol. They're just a waste. And their eternal life will be a waste. And God has all these powers that Job has spoken about. And Job has revealed to us more than what his three friends. There are situations that God could, God controls all these situations. Okay? Now everything I read, everything I said that God does, God does. You cannot explain why God did it. And you can't put Job on the pedestal and say, you know, because you're a sinner, Job. Because you do, you don't know because we already know. It was the devil that did it. And when it comes to these things that Job says that God does and he does, there's three classifications for answers. God did it. The devil got permission to do it. Or you did it yourself. God's using it for judgment. God's using it for chastisement. Or God's, hey, 
your own stupid fault. They warned you about it. A lot of times, the, the sins of man, is when we do things that we know we're not supposed to, then that's your fault. But in the case of Job, we have no idea what happened. Except if you read and study the Bible. And Job does not have the book of Job right now. Job's going to make a plea later on. Oh, if my words were written in a book. They are. Job didn't know that. He didn't know. 